at Pacific Seafood, we operate in four different states, Washington, Oregon, California, and Hawaii, where we raise and grow Pacific and Kumamoto oysters, mussels, and clams. And so having multiple locations uh, under, under perfect growing conditions gives you an ability to capture the different traits of different growing areas, uh, different food, different mineral content, better terrain for the type of aquaculture you're involved with. It means we have a diversity of products and a diversity of sources. We can rely on each other, the different locations, to produce those oysters. It really allows us to be able to provide a consistent supply to our customers year-round. At Pacific Seafood, whatever location we grow, oysters, mussels, or clams, their life cycle begins at the hatchery in Quilcene, Washington. We use our own carefully spawned and selected broodstock to produce larvae. Pacific oysters and Kumamoto oysters are broadcast spawners, which means they release their gametes into the environment. The first part of their life cycle is a swimming larval stage. We take care of those, feed them algae, we grow all kinds of algae and feed them based on their size and their needs at the time. And all that algae is grown right here on site. They'll grow, they'll eat, they'll get big, they'll store some fat, and then they'll shed that swimming organ and their foot will pop out. And they crawl around on substrate looking for a place to settle. Oyster seed will then be set onto dried and clean whole oyster shell called culch that will grow into clusters or individual shell fragments to produce single seed oysters. This building has our single seed upwellers. These will grow up as singles because they've been set to ground up shell. So rather than growing in a cluster on an adult oyster shell, they're growing on a very small piece of shell so that only one larva sticks to each piece of shell. And these will instead of going straight to the beach, we'll go to our flupsy to be grown large enough to go into the next stage of farming. Before our single seed oysters make it to the farms, they have to go through our flupsy, or floating upwell system. It provides nutrients and uh, food for them, so we don't have to constantly feed them with algae. We just take what's out of the bay and let them feed off of that. When those paddle wheels are going, they actually pull water up from underneath the flub seat into the bends, into the center trough, and out the back of the paddle wheel. So that way we don't need a bunch of salt water pumps to keep everything circulated with fresh salt water. The flub seat increases recovery rates by climatizing the baby oysters to the bay in a safe environment that promotes meat growth. Oysters are graded daily to avoid them from growing together until they have grown to size to be planted. The oysters leave the flupsy about half inch, three quarter inch, maybe a little bit bigger, but usually that's the sweet spot for the farms because if I give it too small, then they have to handle it so much more. Versus if I can just get them a, a good decent size, then they only have to handle it once or twice. Oysters that are set onto whole shell, or colch, will be placed into colch bags to spend a lengthy stay in the nursery. Once oysters have grown to size, they are planted at one of our farms. Our Pacific oysters are grown on farms in Willapa Bay, Samish Bay, Grays Harbor, Tillamook Bay, and North Bend. We grow Kumamoto oysters in Eureka, Manila clams in Samish Bay, and mussels in Penn Cove. The most common growing methods for aquaculture are on-bottom and off-bottom. So Kumamoto oysters in Eureka, California are grown in two different ways. We grow them all off-bottom, but one is suspended on what's called a long line, which is a cluster of oysters spaced every four to five inches, uh, and suspended on rope, uh, held up by little PVC pipes, and 100-foot rows, and then those rows are spaced approximately two feet apart. They bomb them off on the lines on the empty pipe, and then they cut the bags open, they flip them out, and then they run them individually, one or two at a time, and then they lock them in on the end and pull them tight to get all the slack out of them. You get them nice and snug, and then they lock them all individually into the tops of the notches of the pipes to get them off the bottom to hold them up off the ground. They got a better chance of survival. You get a little bit more out of them that way too. The other way we grow them is we grow them in what's called SIVA baskets that have oysters anywhere from 150 to 200 count oysters uh, in baskets and they uh, rock with the tide. 
and have a float on them. So that way it tumbles the oyster, gives them a nice uniform cup shape, and that way we get really good survival and the most beautiful oysters you can get. So that it's keeping the growth knocked down on them to make them a perfect spherical, perfect oyster individually, and it also keeps them from growing together. Tidelands that don't lend themselves to off-bottom growing methods, on-bottom growing methods are used. Here in Coos Bay, Oregon, we do on-bottom growing. We break our bags and we dump it on our boat. And then on the high tide, we go and uh, spray the seed with the shovels. We put it on the ground and it just grow on its own. And these oysters, they feed on algaes and diatoms. So when there's sunlight and nutrients, the oysters are also going to grow. So that's when the ideal time to receive Kumoto seed is, is that March time of year. Triploids for the summer and diploids for the winter. The diploids will naturally reproduce in the summertime, and when they do that, there is a soft meat texture. We as an industry have developed um, triploids, and a significant portion of our production from June through September is uh, triploid oysters, just to make sure that we're delivering a quality product. Unlike oysters, Pacific Seafood Pen Cove mussels are grown on floating rafts in the bay. We suspend lines um, approximately 20 feet under the floating rafts. We allow the natural occurring spat uh, secondary to a spawn to, to attach those lines. We keep those lines coiled in the top three feet of the water. Um, as, we, as we catch the spat, the spat will attach and the bissel threads, which is the connective uh, fiber muscle attached to, um, will attach once those set and they get to be about the size of a watermelon seed, we'll actually let those lines down and those lines will, will stay in that down position as the mussels continue to grow. Shellfish farming requires dedication and hard work. From the time they are spawned till they are ready to harvest, Pen Cove mussels spend anywhere from 12 to 14 months in the bay. Depending on the location, oysters take two to three years before they have achieved a market ready size. The next step in the process is harvest. Our mussel harvest and, and packing is largely done on the water. We'll grab the lines that are ready to go, we'll use the elevator, we'll bring those lines onto the boat, we'll strip those lines, strip the mussels off those lines with a brush machine. So think of it as we're sweeping the, the mussels off of those lines. The mussels will fall into a conveyor system or they'll go through another brush machine which will declump them. And so we'll take clumps of mussels and turn, that'll turn them into single mussels. They'll be washed and they'll be sorted, graded, culled, weighed and bagged. For the Kumamoto, we use a mechanical harvester connected to the front of the boat. Uh, we can go in the shallow water and start putting the lines to get the product for the customers. Team members then cut them into individual clusters and they wash them well. They bring them to the processing crew and make sure they have a steady supply of oysters to process. Here in Coos Bay, Oregon, we hand pick close to 85% and maybe 15 or 20 percent we dredge with the boat. For us it's really crucial to harvest the product in a timely manner, uh, ensuring that it's iced down to temp in time, raining, blowing, cold, uh, that doesn't matter. I mean the customer really depends on us to deliver that product so they can deliver that experience to their customer. Once product is harvested, it is brought down to temp and delivered to our nearest processing plant. There it will get turned into all of the various product forms we produce to meet the needs of our customers. We provide a wide variety of product forms. We do shuck meats, both fresh and frozen, live and frozen oysters, clams and mussels, and we provide both of these for food service and retail. And as they're coming to the plant offloaded either by truck or by boat, uh, they're washed and then loaded into the bunkers and we do ice our oysters to keep them within temperature control. Oysters are separated by harvest area to allow for traceability and meticulously checked for quality assurance. If they're going into barbecue line, then they come in as clusters. Those clusters are broken into singles. We have a team of graders who inspect the oysters by tapping the bill. From there, oysters are sent to our state-of-the-art grading machine. It singulates and takes a picture of each individual oyster, packing them into an assortment of colored mesh bags depending on their harvest area, size, and species. 
For doing SEPA singles, those are either packed in a mesh bag or we do do a Hagata line or they could be top shelled and that's where we leave the abductor muscle attached to the bottom of the shell and then those are run through our nitrogen tunnel and frozen at about a negative 135 and glazed and then boxed. We do frozen pillow packs. We do half gallons, cups, containers. They are shucked if that's what line they're going into. So the oyster openers will shuck oysters into a bucket and we keep those under ice. They're washed and grated by hand. Cups are then filled with a little bit of water, oysters, and they get a film seal on them. And then they get a lid, a date, and then into the cooler. Then once it's packaged, it's palletized according to the packing list. And then it is loaded into the individual trucks that will do the deliveries the following day. We have a airport route and we have other trucks that do our local deliveries. An important step for some of our fresh live oysters is the wet storage system. Wet storage is a key factor for our live in-shell market. Oysters are circulated with fresh water from the bay. We have a new wet storage system, uh, state-of-the-art system, built in-house. It provides consistency, meaning we can avoid closures due to rainfall. We can go to the west orders and we don't have to wait for ties or to uh, employees processing of the oysters. Their metabolic activity slows way down, they relax per se, and they don't, it gets rid of the stress. It's like a sauna for the oysters except for it's 40 degrees. That allows our animals to perch out prior to shipping our oysters out to the customers for a cleaner, fresher tasting product. An alternative wet storage method is used in Penn Cove. What's unique about our wet storage system is it is out in the bay. And I think historically some people think wet storage, they think of large cement containers with, re with recirculated water. And that's not how we wet store. We actually take the product and we hang it in the bay off of a raft. So it's as fresh as everything that's growing in the bay around it. At Pacific Seafood, we're consistently looking for new ways to improve the sustainability and environmental impact of our farms through new innovation. An example of this innovation is our Cluster Buster. Oysters that are grown on a long line, we needed to get the rope out of the long line so that we could recycle that oyster shell to be able to grow more oysters on, and in, in turn not putting the rope out into the estuary and develop what we call a Cluster Buster. And it visits other farms and they're able to get the rope out of the clusters and be able to have clean shell to regrow oysters on. In a way, the shells are recycled because the oysters grow up on the farm, they're harvested, then those shells are cleaned, they're brought back up here to Quilcene where we dry them off and we use those to set the new larvae. We believe it is important to be good stewards of the environment for generations to come. Pacific Seafood takes it a step farther, committing to the BAP certification program. So BAP is Best Aquaculture Practices. It's one of the highest standards of certification that a facility can have, and we are proudly four-star BAP certified. BAP standards cover environmental responsibility, social accountability, food safety, and animal health and welfare. Which means that the feed, the hatchery, the farms, and the processing plant are all BAP certified so that we can provide the healthiest protein on the planet. This allows our customers to know that they are buying a safe, sustainable, and ethically sourced seafood product. It impacts our ecosystem by keeping our ecosystem clean. Shellfish provide a three-dimensional habitat. They filter the water to improve water clarity. They provide fish habitat and also provide an important benefit to the ecosystem. So seeing our oysters out in the marketplace in a BAP certified cup is a sense of pride. Consistently deliver a quality product. I mean, that's at the core of who we are, what we are is just customer service. It feels pretty gush darn good to see your own oysters on the shelf. You're looking at the quality that's on the shelf, they're nice and clean, good looking oysters. That, you know, all the work that you put into those oysters that you harvested are finally getting out to the, to the customer and watching people buy them is pretty fulfilling. Mussel farming is exciting. We have a really unique product. The way we harvest it's unique. The way we grow it's unique. Uh, we have a long history. 
of growing high quality mussels. We have a, a long history of growing high quality uh, oysters and clams. Uh, we, we, we work hard. We are stewards of the environment. We take good care of our farm and we're a fun, a fun group of folks. It's a sustainable way of living. You know, it's, it's been here, it's gonna be here, and uh, it will continue to be in the future. At Pacific Seafood, our values help us navigate our business in three distinctive areas of responsibility, sustainability, community, and self-governance. It is our company philosophy that guides our everyday decisions. It's good to be responsible, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because it also sets the bar for our company's commitment to ensure that the communities in which we work and live will continue to prosper.